everyone, I'm John Sisson. I'm currently in Tokyo, Japan. Uh, just a short trip for me at the moment because I actually wanted to climb Mount Fuji, but because of weather conditions, I wasn't able to do that. I didn't make it to the fifth station because I actually started at the base of the mountain. So uh, I took a trip to Tokyo. I'm in Shinjuku at the moment, and I currently am using the Sony A7R4 and I do have the Tamron 17 to 28 mil attached. Now, I've been using the Tamron for a while now, for just over a month. I do have a better understanding of how it performs and its autofocusing performance as well as its image quality. So stay tuned because I'm gonna show you a few snaps from my trip. And of course, I'll let you know what I personally think of it. So stay tuned. This lens joins the already well-regarded 28 to 75 mm f2.8 that was released last year and complements it as a wide-angle alternative to Sony's 16 to 35 mm f2.8 GM, which is a lot more expensive, heavier, and larger. While this serves as a cheaper alternative to Sony's GM, it doesn't mean it skimps out on delivering the goods. Okay. So I thought I'd do a quick video here. I'm actually at a cafe, it's called Reissue. It is in Harajuku and they make some really cool 3D art. So that's what it looks like. Sorry, I'm really shaking at the moment. But I got Totoro, so they are pretty cool. But uh, besides that, uh, I just want to take you through a quick tour around the lens. So if you haven't already seen my first look video, uh, I just want to give you a quick look at it. Just to let you know, it does accept 67mm filters, so well, it is actually the same filter thread as the 28-75 that was released not too long ago. You do have a zoom ring which is situated more towards the front of the lens, where the focus ring is on the back, or more towards the camera body. There is also a rubber gasket, so it's going to be protected more for, you know, to protect the lens and the camera from dust and moisture. And in terms of its design, it's very simple. There aren't any focus switches or uh, focus hold buttons, so very simple. There isn't much to do, or isn't really much to see with the lens itself. But you do get a supplied pedal type lens hood, so that just simply clicks onto the front of the lens without any issues. Since I am using it with the Sony A7R4, it does feel very well balanced. There isn't any issues when traveling around with it. Very light as well. It's quick and doesn't hunt, and when I was shooting with it in continuous autofocus, it was able to keep up. I will say it's not the fastest, but for a wide angle lens, for me anyway, autofocus isn't the main priority, but it did do the job. I did use this a bit for vlogging when I went on my trip to Japan, and a little side trip when I went to Hong Kong. I like how wide it is to fit myself and anyone else I have in the frame, but also because if I really needed to, I have a bit of zoom plus an f2.8 aperture for low light. However, I usually shot at f5.6 or f6.1 because I don't want my depth of field to be too shallow. Just be sure that if you do intend to vlog with this lens that you try to hold the camera as steady as you can, or perhaps use a gimbal because while the a7 III and a7R4 cameras have stabilization built into the body, it's not going to give you smooth free videos compared to what a gimbal can do. Speaking of gimbals, I have attached it to my DJI Ronin SC and wow, this is a treat to use. Because the zoom is internal, the physical size of the lens doesn't change, meaning I can use different zoom settings without having to recalibrate the gimbal. And if you don't know, my dog's name is Sachi and she's a Siberian Husky. Now when it comes down to image quality, I was impressed with what it had to offer. It was tack sharp, especially at the center of the frame, and while it wasn't as impressive in the corners, I was still happy with the results I was getting. Chromatic aberration was well handled with a bit of vignetting wide open at f2.8, so stopping down would definitely help alleviate this. Bokeh was fairly pleasing thanks to its 9 bladed aperture rings. And just to let you know, all these photos were straight out of the camera with the a7 III and the a7R4 with no post-processing. Alright, so I just finished eating. I've been eating all day, but <laughs> to let you know about the Tamron 17-28mm, 
This lens is going to be great for anyone that prefers to shoot wide angle landscapes, architectural, anything that would be great for low light photography. I would actually see a lot of people who shoot event photography finding this very useful for their needs. In saying that, it is extremely cheap compared to say the 16 to 35 millimeter f2.8. So if anything, this is a great lens to go with. If you love the 28 to 75 from Tamron, you're going to love the 17 to 28 as well. Now, I really can't wait to see what else Tamron brings to the table later on in the year. At the time of this video, there's only two lenses that are made for the full frame E-mount system that are designed for mirrorless. So, in saying that, if you have any other questions, please feel free to leave a comment down below. And if you already own one, let me know what you think of it. And remember to like this video if you found it helpful. And subscribe to my channel for more Tamron lens reviews and tutorials. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram for more sample photos of this lens. And follow me for more travel food related stuff as well on my Instagram. Take a look in the description down below for more information about the lens, as well as affiliate links that help support the channel, as well as future projects. Now until then, happy shooting and thanks for watching. So I'm at Umag Umagashi Umageshi and this is actually the first station so <laughs> Ooh, it's like pitch black here and there's fog everywhere and uh it's sprinkling so I don't think I can actually do Mount Fuji today unfortunately. Mm -hmm.